a thunderous start from us. And yeah, it was prior to the goal going in, we saw Robbie up to deliver a, um, a cross or two with, with his right, which was just fantastic to watch. And yeah, as the goal went in, for fantastic. They got a goal, which was, like you say, it was it was a rocket, deserved to be a goal. The same things, you, you know, if you have a shot from 20 odd yards, yes, we could have closed them down quicker, but it was a great effort. And then, it, yeah, it was quite an attractive game of football for the first 20 minutes. And then after that, it seemed to become as flat as a pancake. And it, yeah, we there was the odd bit here and there. I think the most exciting part of the first half after that was Luke, um, Luke McGee having a few saves to make. Um, but yeah, it was a real end of season feel to it for Rovers, but an end of season feel when there's nothing much to cheer about. You know, we, we've had seasons in the past going back to when Brian Little's first season, we'd have the end of the season was coming along, nothing much to play for, but we had a nice positive end to it. We had a, an FA Cup run in between that, whereas this season just seems to be, we've had a couple of decent runs and yeah, there it goes. So the, the match, it, it, I, it's really difficult to remember much that happened after the first 20 minutes. I'm struggling for, there's a lot of midfield play, a lot of passes. I was just, yeah, I was watching it on iFollow fortunately today, so I didn't have to travel too far outside of Bristol to, uh, to watch it just down in the lounge and it was quite yeah it's quite nice listening to uh Higgy having a bit of a laugh and some of the pronunciation of names but yeah it's um I'm glad I decided not to make the uh three and a bit hour journey up to the world today as selfish as that may sound it's just another one of those games that Tranmere should have won it's another game by the way in which Brad Walker didn't start and Tranmere didn't win. Two wins in 15 games that he hasn't started now. Uh, and also another one of those games in which they have more possession than their opposition and didn't win. Granted, it was only a 51 to 49% swing, but still, Tranmere had more possession than Colchester and didn't do anything or enough with it. They had their chances. Look, their keepers made an excellent save from Morris. There's been at least one, if not two, cleared off the line, um, if memory serves me right. But you've got to be more clinical. And it just kind of epitomises where Tranmere have been over the last two or three months, I think. Having those chances, having the, the the opportunity to put the game to bed, not being able to do so. And then inevitably almost ending up on the back foot for the final 15 minutes. And if anyone looked like was going to win it late on, it was beleaguered Colchester who didn't really trouble Tranmere in the opening hour. Uh, it's, yeah, as you said at the start, it felt like two points dropped for Sutton in a way. And I think, for certain, if you're looking who do you want to be playing, if you're having an away match at this time of the season, you're probably thinking a team in mid-table with little to play for, especially a team like Tranmere, who they can get psyched up for the big match, the teams against the top of the league. But when it comes to teams, you think we should be challenging against. We, we don't seem to turn up and we seem to be causing all sorts of trouble in the first 20 minutes of every ball into the box. Like you say, we had a couple cleared off the line. Um, but yeah, the clinical edge isn't there. We were getting into good positions with Kieran Morris a couple of times. He had a Seems to be a, replicate a couple of volleys on uh, the side of the box, a few players inside, but yeah, it just there didn't seem to be that urgency to get the ball in the box. It seems pretty lethargic. Um, the centre of midfield, uh, I think McAleer. I think we're every time I see him picked, what's he going? You like to think players? Higgy was saying before the game, players going to be playing for a new contract, whether it's with us or with someone else. I think they'll be busting the gut. You don't really see anyone busting to get out there. Um, I think we're all expecting McAleer not to be here at the end of the season. So when we see him start in there, it's, yeah, it's always looking at someone else's midfielder and it was still yet to, you know, there's a lot of sideways passing that goes on or, or the passes that go awry. And yeah, we, we just, we could see they weren't, I, I watched Colchester in midweek. I watched a bit of the Bradford game and I follow. And then um, I listened over to uh, see how Colchester were going on. because I've got a, ulterior motive of wanting Forest Green to get relegated. And it does sound like they're there for the well, they're on a horrendous form, really. They did they've been drawing lots, but they haven't won many. They've got um the Cowleys are, are there, who we've all thought would do work wonders. But yeah, they okay, they, they did beat Newport, but that was a very late win um in, in that one. But yeah, I, I could go around it's, it it was just an instantly forgettable match really it feels. We did have some of those chances. The atmosphere felt sounded pretty flat but then you've got to give something to cheer about and it it reminded me a bit of the Morecambe game you know we had a, a flash in the pan 20 minutes or so and then after that it was um pretty forgettable <laughs>